Welcome back. So check it out. Um, just discovered yesterday that Acrobot, uh, the Java-based implementation of the Acrophobia game, is now on GitHub. And has been for quite some time, for a couple months. Apparently I missed its initial edition. Um, but yeah, kudos to Mr. Chernoff for uh, uploading this uh, and providing these fantastic uh, commit messages so I can understand exactly what's going on. Um, but no, seriously, this is pretty awesome that um, now that we've got Acrophobia uh, uploaded to GitHub, if there's anything I want to do about this uh, to customize it, I can do so. Um, so you saw all the time I spent, uh, for those of you watching it live, you saw the time I spent um, adding the license file, making sure this is GNU public version uh, 2 with the license enabled. Um, I'm assuming he has no qualms with that, and I really hope not, but if he does, I'll just have to get rid of this later, but hopefully he's okay with that. Um, and added the readme describing what is acrophobia. So in each round, Acrobot generates these acronyms and players must come up um, with the most coherent or humorous sentence or statement that fulfills the requirements of the acronym. Uh, so they have to backronym the acronym. After a set amount of time expires, each player then votes anonymously via the bot for their favorite answer aside from their own. Uh, points are awarded. Uh, bonus points are awarded based on the fastest response. The first player to a set number of points wins the game. That's acrophobia. Um, now I know you all love this web browser that we're looking at. But some of you have been looking at it for quite some time here. But let me switch my window capture. Um, so I spent some time this morning just getting this set up. Um, honestly, it took me like maybe five minutes to get this. No, maybe ten. Ten's probably more appropriate. Um, yeah. So I managed to import this project by hook or by crook. I found a way to get it into NetBeans um, because, in my opinion, NetBeans is a superior tool to Eclipse for Java-based development. For almost any kind of Java application, um, it's easier to do things in NetBeans. That said, there are some things that are probably easier to do for like mobile development or who knows what under Eclipse, um, but we're not doing that right now. We're developing a uh, Java-based, well actually we're using this existing Java-based application and um, seeing if we can get it to execute on uh, Twitch. So, uh, I did run this earlier, just hit the big run button, and I got an error message. Uh, this is Java returned one, we got an array index out of bounds exception in the source code. So here we go. Here's our source code, um, public static void main string arguments. So it appears that we're looking for some very specific things inside um, the main function. Uh, presumably what channel we're connecting to, what um, bot name we're using, and so forth. Um, so unfortunately, because it's not documented, uh, we get to figure out the protocol, but that's no big deal. Um, so acroserve takes arguments args0, args1, args2, and args3. Name, host, OAuth, and channel. So this would be an appropriate place to add some Java doc. Uh, constructs the acrobot server. Um, name, I believe is the IRC name of the bot, host, uh, IRC server, um, server name, 
me, I guess that's appropriate. OAuth, uh, this is an OAuth authentication key. Um, let's send that out. Channel. RC channel where game is to be played. RC channel to moderate. Okay, so we got usage now. Um, oh, another thing that's worth noting is you see all these yellow lines that indicate uh, that things are not done ideally. Um, I believe there's even an action items window, if I can get that open down here. Uh, so we find in this project there are 12 warnings and 17 to-dos. So we see things like redundant casts, uh, alt enter will show hints for this, and we can do things like removing redundant casts that don't need to be there. Um, so as we go along, uh, we'll fix things. Uh, so let's just show action items in the current file. Curiously, action items does not include all warnings, just um, action items, which I guess that makes sense. There's no sense polluting um, your action items with just a whole bunch of warnings. Um, so vectors. Do we want to use vectors? Uh, I suppose vectors are good enough. We probably want to actually use properties instead of vectors, but whatever. Um, there's so many ways to do these things. Or lists, or array lists, or what have you. Um, init Twitch. At least he didn't embed the OAuth key into the source code, so that's a good thing. Um, okay. So, I think we can interpret some usage based on that. Um, okay, so this should be name and host and OAuth and channel. So that's bug number one that's been fixed, even though we haven't fully tested that and haven't even gotten to that point in the code. Um, let's see, format, formats the code. I'm not sure what exactly changed here. Oh. Uh, was there some really bad looking code somewhere? I'm not sure. Yeah, so alt shift at least, let's format this before we get too far. Um, just to... Well, I'm not sure I need to. This isn't my code to begin with anyway. We could format the sections that uh, we're working on, but there's no need to go rewrite the whole code. Especially because there might be better ways to write it anyhow. Okay, so we're going to connect to the Twitch server using those credentials that we just uh, got. Um... Uh, to do games on multiple channels. Right now it's just playing on the one channel. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see. I forget exactly where you go inside. The, well, let me run this again. Let's see, again, this fails. Um, Here, pull this new acro serve. Uh, because this won't always be hosted in Zug Addict's channel. Yeah, we're using an IDE. Imagine that. Um, so, this was initially an Eclipse project. I've migrated it out of Eclipse into NetBeans. And now that it's in NetBeans, you guys can only see like 10 lines of code at a time. I hope you're happy. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, 
So, yeah, and then the benefit of doing it this way is that it's slightly easier to integrate with GitHub. Uh, just like I say git, and I can go to the remote and push my changes. Um, so that's one click to invoke the menu. Admittedly, some mouse gestures to go find this push to upstream thing. There are easier ways to get to this too. Um, but yeah, this provides better Git integration than say a console does where I'm typing out all those um, Git commands. But this also limits your usage of Git. It doesn't, provide, it doesn't allow you to do um, the most advanced things you can do with Git. All right, so when I run this, this is what I was looking for. Um, mm -hmm. That's the correct main class configuration. This is configuration selection arguments. All right, I'm not sure how to get um, a separated list of arguments. So I'm actually gonna need to go over to the friendly search engine. NetBeans application arguments. Are these like space delimited, comma delimited, etc., etc.? Um, well, these are command line arguments. Is that so? Oh, right, of course they are. Even though there's no command line. Okay, so I go there. Oh, this works just like a command line. So it's delimited by however you would normally delimit arguments um, on a command line. And on a Windows platform, um, you delimit them by spaces. Uh, I've not made any progress on Leechest desktop. Uh, the reason I'm stuck on that is because Windows doesn't have SSL support. So I can't establish a secure WebSocket to leech us. And without that, I can't do the development on Windows. And I don't have a full Linux IDE. Or I don't have a ability to stream from Linux. Um, it'd be quite challenging to do so. Um, so I guess one thing we saw from a recent stream was that I do have the ability to use the bash subsystem for Windows um, or the Linux subsystem for Windows um, maybe I could find a way to within that very limited environment get Ruby installed and get um, the application to run inside this subsystem where I don't know if it's all sandboxed off and if I don't know if it has access to graphics libraries and it could be quite challenging but maybe it might be possible to get a GUI application running in under the Linux subsystem connecting out so maybe that's doable I'd written it off as not possible under Windows because Windows is insecure but um, maybe it's doable maybe there's a way to do it Um, either way, let's take this. Switched node. Oh yeah, I'll just do that overnight, no problem. <laughs> just completely change my approach. Well, um, the advantage of doing it in Ruby is I don't have to write my own uh, libraries. I'm not aware of libraries in Node that allow me to just immediately have a chessboard and all the pieces and legal move validation and all of that. If that exists in Node, maybe I do it in Node. I'm not aware that it does. Uh, okay, my bot name is actually... Not Acrobot, that's Zug's bot. This is my bot. Um, I forget my OAuth token, but we'll try to use OAuth and it'll fail because well, it'll attempt to connect at least. I suppose you think that was terribly clever. Um, 
Oops, what do we got? What do we got? Chessboardjs.com. Hmm. All right, so how do I run that? Okay, you were mentioning last time. Yeah, I'll add you. Why not? One second, I'll stop what I'm doing and add you. Um, let's see, Nightbot. Log in. Log in. No, seriously, log in. Authorize. Log in. Authenticate. Let me add. Okay. Go to the regulars tab. Add a user. Okay. Um. Little bit of maintenance here just because some people are more likely to have their accounts hacked than to actually come back to this channel so I don't need to necessarily have those people in the regulars list um, okay that probably looks fine I think that's saved Hopefully that'll work. All right, so anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, so you're showing me chessboards.js.com, which is a JavaScript library that indeed has a chessboard and presumably all the rules of chess and everything you'd need in terms of an application and saving games and um, whatever it is that the Ruby chess library automatically does built in for me. Presumably, chessboard.js is functionally equivalent. Um. Oh, right, Electron was what you mentioned last time. I think I did bookmark that. If not, yeah, I do have that electron.atom.io. Um, not the subject of the stream, but between that and now I'll add chessboard.js or js.com, although I'm not sure why I'm not using a different uh, chess JS library. Like I know Lee Chess um, uses one that has variant support. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. I've seen it a thousand times, but um, it's the, uh, what is it? Chess ground. Is there any reason I should prefer chessboard.js to chess ground? I don't think either one of them really offers an equivalent of the Ruby gem, uh, but also the one thing about Ruby is it's more future proof um, than JavaScript is. Um, Yeah, why would I want to do something that's built in JavaScript instead of compiled from Mithril? I'm sure there's advantages and disadvantages to every way of doing it. It's just saying doing things in JavaScript seems error prone. Um, even Leechus deals with so many JavaScript problems. Yeah, you could say that about like C sharp. C sharp's on its way out. .dot net's on its way out. Everything is on its way out. But uh, the program won't crash tomorrow. It'll continue working even if you don't make any code changes to it. You can't really make the same claim about Java. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. It'll probably work. It probably won't take too much effort to upkeep it. Um.
Now, in terms of deploying it, that's a different matter because Electron and uh, JavaScript's a lot easier to deploy. Okay. So I'm missing deflet.ltr. Um, missing acrodata.txt. Um, oh, here's our attempt to connect to the server. Connected. Tried to join Zug Addict. Disconnected. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't think my bot's allowed to join that channel anyway. So let's go back to our properties. Um, and here, try to join my own channel. I'm pretty certain I still need the OAuth token for this to work. Um, did it try to use the same parameters? Or did it update those parameters? Okay, Improper, improperly formatted auth token. I don't think that JavaScript is easier to develop in than Ruby. See if I can go get my bots off token. Uh, Twitch O off. Okay, I forget where I put my O off token. So let's try to just make something that's male for or better formatted. Uh, OAuth colon token is better formatted. Click OK and run that. Um, of course, that's not going to connect to the server. OK, login authentication failed. So baby steps, right? Um, now, do I still have, do I still have my bot? I don't think I do. At one point I did have a bot that connected uh, to Twitch. Open project. Um, where is it? Okay, let's just open Chernobyl. Possibly I had an OAuth token in here. Um, properties, maybe. That's my main class, but it doesn't have my OAuth token. Um, Resources. Oh, here we are. IRC.properties. That'll do. Um, so, source packages should apparently include an RES folder for resources. Um, open. There we go. Uh, There's all the files I was missing in terms of resources. Um, Leechus.properties, there's logger.properties, user.properties. I don't remember exactly what this is all used for, but I think those last three could be useful. Let's paste. Um, Let's rename that to be resources rather than, uh, whoops, that's not rename, that's remove. Uh, resources, there we go. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I think that'll do. Uh, again, this has Olaf channel max characters. IRC chat.twitch.tv. Is that where it's located these days, or is it located at irc.twitch.tv? Um, Twitch IRC chat. Uh, IRC API. I know I shouldn't be exposing my token on stream, so I'll have to replace it later. And that's no big deal. Um, Okay, where where is the URL? IRC dot markdown Twitch IRC. Okay, so it's an IRC chat Twitch TV port six 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 seven. Uh, SSL is supported on 443, except Windows doesn't support SSL. Um, so, oh, the host name. Yeah, that's the correct host name. Uh, port 6667. Um, I think that's good. Uh, is there anything I want to do here? Yeah, whatever, we'll figure that out later. Let's close Chernobyl. Um, and see if I can run this. I don't suppose that my bot's actually connecting. Login authentication failed. Logged onto server connected. Disconnected. Okay, so the authentication failed. I need to get a new token. Um, Twitch bot token. There's got to be a way to generate this. Uh, <laughs> All right, so authentication never expose your stuff um, send the user you'd like to authorize or authenticate to this URL hmm maybe what I need to do is just open a new browser uh, remember my old twitch password let's see log in Hopefully this will not be showing the video as I'm attempting to log in. Of course it's showing the video. I'll have to mute that. Still can't log in. All right, let's try logging in this way. Of course I'm already logged in as a different user. So let's log out. Uh, attempt to log in with my bot. Uh, okay. Then I have to go get my email. It'll probably take a minute to generate. Um, so. Um, other than that, we didn't... Oh, we still did get errors. Never mind. I was going to say, look, all our errors went away. But they did not. Um, 
So resources. Um, I should probably, instead of saying res slash, probably just change that to um, the file. Wait, how is this? Where's that res slash or backslash coming from? I guess uh, Eclipse has a different way of loading resources than NetBeans does. File reader ABC file. ABC file is the thing passed into load ABC, which is string ABC file, which is over here, which is acro serve ABC DEF. Oh, okay. Um, replace that in all cases just with nothing. Deflet. Uh, apparently, Deflet is um, not having an extension, but the as that extension gets added later. All right, what am I failing here? Deflet LTR not found. Um, oh, I'm using a file reader. Okay. Um, try get resource. Um, ABC file returns what? Oh, okay. To say acro letter uh, get resource. Or is it this? Di well, it's not this dot get resource. It's not. Acro letter. It's acro letter class get resource. Um, which looks for that and returns a URL. Uh, how do I read that? to whatever, to whatever. Um, I'd like to think that would work. It probably won't. Uh, no pointer. That's too bad. That really shouldn't null pointer, I don't think. Um, since when I compile this, in fact, do I have auto build on? Surely I do. But uh, can I build? Build. Run. Yeah, I still have a null pointer here. Still, this um, ABC file is not found. So here's the URL. Um, see that? At least the image got found. That's pretty spectacular. Um, how did that work? Somewhere in this code base. Um, yeah, we do this. Okay. Um, so apparently that res slash is required wherever I removed it. I don't remember where I took it from, but I could show my changes. Uh, here's my changes where I got rid of that those res letters. Um, where do I go to undo this section of the change? Oh, there we go. Just hit the button. Undoes the thing that broke that. Try this again. Um, try doing a build. Uh, where do I go to automatically build? Anyway, let's run it. Okay, still got a null pointer. 
Um, let's see, system dot out dot print line of this stuff. Um, ABC file and print line URL. Let's try that. Build. Assuming that built, it did build. Um, oh, okay. Compile and save can be enabled in project properties. Uh, here's build, compiling, compile and save. There we go. Much better. Um, See, so yeah, whenever I run this, it'll be running the latest, greatest version of the code. Um, Okay, that still failed to find um, the resource. So if I look at this from a build point of view, um, file it's looking for is res slash deflet.ltr. It's not in res, it's just in deflet. Uh, it's just in the top level directory, so I did have this right the first time. Um, namely that, whoops, namely that this does not need to specify the resource directory because now we're looking in the resources path. That uh, still failed. It's looking for deflet.ltr. Um, I look in build, classes, there's the resource. It's right there. Um, so I build, clean and build, sure, whatever. Okay, it's clean, it's built. Let's run it. I'm still getting a null pointer. Um, And yet, still somehow, this other thing, this getting the acro help image, um, still works. This dot get class dot get res. Well, let's try it that way. Maybe this dot class does not work, but this dot get class uh, dot get resource might be doing better. Um, Oh, but we can't do this get class in the context of a static method. Um, that's tricky. So I think I had that right, but uh, but I don't have access to the class loader here. Okay. Can I do something like this elsewhere then? In fact, I don't need any of that here if I can put it in my calling context instead. Um, there's a instance method, instance method. Load ABC is not an instance method. So, um, sure, import what we need to import for this. Uh, I'm not going to do the assignment there. Let's see if we get anything informative on our uh, console. Null. So, oops, this seems to be uh, this uh, get class. Uh, as opposed to something that's compiled earlier. Um, so it still fails to find the file. I'm still confused. Okay, is there anything else I feel to consider about this image? Acrohelp.png. Wait, where am I looking for that? 
Org, Chernovia, Acro, Server, Image. There's our image. Now, I mean, that's special. But, um, so why does that work? And I have multiple source paths. Um, Pile stuff. Exclude from the jar file these kinds of things, uh, but that's not what we're intending to exclude. Um, how do I identify resources? confused. I mean, clearly that's a... And if I look over here, I've got org, this, that, and the other. Um, Chernovia net, games, parlor, acro, server, image. Sure enough, we find uh, the resource way out there. But you should find these resources in the top level directory. I shouldn't need to move those. Um, should be okay. <laughs> um, so where do I go to find resources? Also, let me check if I got my mail to reset my bot's password. I got my mail here. to provide a super secure password that we're going to put on our stream for the brief instant where I have to type it in um, in order to get the... actually I don't have to put that password on stream but whatever um, one thing I will have to do uh, oh. oops Ah, whoopsie daisy. Okay. No, I just want to log in. Is that too much? And then from that, once I'm logged in, I can get an OAuth token and be happy with that. Um. If I visit this website, am I going to get a token? No. Uh, where do I go to get a token?
client ID is equal to your client ID. Where do I find, I guess I'll put the browser up. Uh, I know surfing for help on the internet is exciting, but looking at the code here might be less helpful. So how did I get an OAuth token when I wanted to do this? This documentation is less than helpful. That's not where I wanted to go. That's not it either. Let's go back. Activity. Stream key is not what I want because I'm not looking I'm not looking for a key for the streaming, I'm just looking for an authentication token. I'm going to assume that this is the same thing. It almost certainly isn't. I almost certainly need some other kind of token, but let's show the key. something some way I need on my user account to specify that this is a bot and I want to be able to log in on the IRC channel um, and I'm not seeing a setting for that There's a lot of settings, but I'm not finding the setting I need for uh, an OAuth token. uses the implicit grant flow. So I have to identify my client somehow. Um, It's not what I want to do, I just want to do an authorization. Goodness. Okay, let's search for Twitch chat bot. And no, I don't want to use an existing bot. I want to have a new bot that connects to the Twitch server. Um <clears throat> I might have to do this offline because apparently Twitch's documentation just does not support what I am trying to do. Like if I wanted to use somebody else's bot on somebody else's site, um, that would be something Twitch would support. But in terms of developing new code, they don't allow that, apparently. Either that, or I could bug, um, I could bug John Chernoff about this. He says that nobody's been doing anything with his code, and he made his code like completely unusable. So what am I supposed to do about that? I'm trying to demonstrate that I can find a way to use it, but Twitch is a pain, Eclipse is a pain, GitHub's a pain. And there's just too many hurdles for me to even get started running this software, apparently. Um, I'm just stumped.
Does anybody know how I'm supposed to do, how I can get an OAuth token? And once I have the OAuth token, um, I can then authenticate using my client. Chat API, Twitch for developers, Twitch Chat API version version five overview. Oh, well, check that out. I... Incredible. I'll have to show you what I'm looking at. Cause it's amazing. They've got documentation. It says this is the server, this is the port, SSL supported on 443. Your nickname must be your Twitch username in lowercase. Your password should be an OAuth token authorized through our API. And hey look, they even give you the URL to their API. You click on it, this is their production API for developers. That's not helpful. Um, I guess they've moved things. Maybe this documentation's out of date. So I looked here, I found this. Our API overview for API version 5. Version 3 is scheduled to be deprecated this year or removed altogether, so we recommend you migrate to version 5. Okay, well, let's just assume that... Actually, no, this is version 5 documentation I'm looking at right here. Um, it's broke. It doesn't work. Um, what am I supposed to do with this? It's not February 14th yet. Um, yeah. So, 10 days hence, um, version 3 is deprecated. Do you need help? Uh, report bugs on the GitHub issues page. Oh, I am going to report a bug. I'm going to link to this say that your version 5 documentation doesn't work um, because there's really nothing more I can do with this until they give me some help uh, just to prove that this is still broken I go over to their documentation here their version 5 documentation for Twitch IRC. Click on the authorized through our API. It's not working. Uh, actually, does not work specifically 404 not found. OAuth token generator 404 not found. really don't think anything more is necessary. So, yeah, hopefully they'll advise or fix.
source target. There we go. That's all we're doing with that for today, apparently. Way to go, Twitch. Um, Alright, well that was fun. Um, so, okay, I guess now we take a look. Um, let's see, how much time do we have? We still have some time. So we're going to look at Electron. Because apparently this is the right way to do it. Okay, how do I do this in NetBeans? Fine, we'll download it for Windows. Just to see if the libraries work at all. If we get a library working at all, then we'll bother trying to do this from source. Okay, we have this thing that launched. That's it's better than nothing. You'll need git and you'll need node.js on your computer. How do I install that on Windows? How do I install Node.js on Windows? Since it's easy to use and everybody uses it, the easiest thing to use and it's very collaborative and all these buzzwords but how do I do it? Do I do this on my Linux subsystem? Here's the Electron Quick Start app. Um, there's documentation. Clearly, this is a very simple get started guide. Trivial for the most basic of developers. Because everybody does things in JavaScript and that makes it easy. They've got a core team, they've got contributors. It's good that they have at least consistent policies and they're well spelled out. Okay, they do have a quick start guide. Um. An electron. The process that runs package.json's main script is called the main process. The script that runs in the main process can display a GUI by creating web pages. Since Electron uses Chromium for displaying web pages, Chromium's multi-process architecture is also used. Each web page in Electron runs its own process, which is called the renderer process. In normal browsers, web pages for usually run in a sandbox environment are not allowed access to native resources. Electron users, however, have the power to use Node.js APIs in web pages to allow lower level operating system interactions. Okay, so this is all based on Chromium, so hopefully it deploys Chromium automatically. You could use Electron as a minimal Chromium browser controlled by JavaScript. Okay. So then we have this distinction between the main process and the renderer process. Okay, so we write our first app, your app, package.json, and we have not even talked about dependencies, installation, just getting something click, up, click, click something and it's up and running. That's usually unrealistic to hope for, but it would be nice. Um, Format of package.json is the same as Node's modules, and since we are controlled by Node.js, that tells us that we have to develop things in a Node way. So this, even though they never said it, uh, we're dependent upon Node, and it's just um, see that this is a variant of the Node.js runtime. Um, no, but we're dependent on this variant of the node runtime, we still have to be able to install this somehow. 
and then once you've installed it, you just throw in these magic words. Use this incantation. At least these are comments. And um, since we have access to all kinds of low-level things, um, we have to be pretty specific about what we're doing in the most minimal application. Define your document that you want to render, and then run it. Once you've created all your files, then you probably want to try running your app. Really, you don't say. Okay. Electron is an NPM mod. Oh, well now we're dependent upon NPM. I just don't understand. They say this is the easiest thing ever to use. And everybody does things in JavaScript and Node. And while that's wonderful and great, it's not the best thing for GUI applications for easy development. Okay, list of boilerplates. Oh, okay. We got a list of boilerplates. So I have to pick one for my first web project. Okay, so in fact, there's the quick start app. Here's the source code. Now, I just want to prove that I can even run these pieces of software. Like here, um, it says the quick start app is a bare bones setup that pairs with these demos. Follow the instructions, you'll need Git and Node.js. Um, and I have to be dependent upon NPM and everything that entails, too. Uh, everybody's going this way. Uh, it's all JavaScript-based. It uses the NPM uh, repository. And I just... Like, there's no explanation of the philosophy, the design principles, the architecture seems haphazard. How is anybody supposed to follow this and understand it? Yeah, that's wonderful that you have this nice little icon showing, hey, look, we do all these things. To try to get people excited about this library. But this is just nonsense. Okay, let's get started. Hey, look, a simple tutorial. Oh my goodness. Would a tutorial be a bit much to ask? I guess that's what the getting started guide thing is. So we don't need these boilerplate codes things. We don't need to run this example. We have to create a document. We have to write all this code, which admittedly I guess isn't that much for defining an entire application, but none of it's boilerplated for you. You have to write your own boilerplate code. You can start from any of the boilerplates they provided. Um, and since this is governed by NPM, you have to define a couple extra things. Any competent developer can keep track of all these things. But this is really looking like work. And I'm sure that some of these things are going to change over time as JavaScript changes. And the unfortunate thing about this is the way that it's organized. Okay, yeah, there's all these comments like create the window, new window, load the index.html, index.html. Okay, fine, you're explaining what you're doing. When the window is closed, we emit this. Window is null. Um, but there's nothing explaining the philosophy of how to create a boilerplate. I mean, okay, maybe I have to check out the advanced documentation to get an explanation of what the hell this library is. Um, documentation's not very conveniently organized. Quick start. Okay, I mean, this is what I was looking for. Um, I should tear this apart on its merits, too. This is ridiculous. Yes, I can learn this, but learning this is work. And learning this is learning a whole bunch of arbitrary shit I'm never going to use again, that nobody's going to want to use, that uses libraries that are NPM-based. NPM has its own set of problems and governance issues. This is just completely ridiculous. 
Um, yeah, I'm sure it works just fine. Everybody loves JavaScript and Node.js, but it's not useful for GUI design. It's just not useful. That's too much work to learn for something I'm never going to be able to reuse. So, that's that. Uh, let's see. Okay, no response yet to my issue with their API. Um, so, yeah. Pretty simple and straightforward. Their OAuth token generator doesn't make tokens. Um, oh, sorry, you weren't able to see the Electron API demos thing. I wasn't capturing that. Whatever. You'll just have to imagine that it was there. Sorry about that. Um, so, we'll see if they ever get back to me on that. Um, should we check out how the tests are going? Hey, look. Positive stuff happened. Yay. Pending. More tests. Tweak imbalance parameters for atomic. All right, so where was the thing I introduced? How's it doing? Is it completed? Atomic tune imbalance. I had introduced something for Crazy House. It's still in the queue. Um, Yeah, right. No, I I gave like three attempts at trying to fix the crazy house engine to work on those two specific positions that you mentioned. And it works great on those two positions, it just sucks overall. Um I'm I should probably close that issue because ninety nine point nine 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 percent of issue uh positions in Crazy House are not that position. Um and probably aren't very similar. So fixing it to work on those two particular positions probably isn't going to help overall. Or at least that's what the tests seem to indicate, is that like, I've tried multiple different ideas to try to address those two specific positions, and none of those ideas work. Um, or they work poorer than just throwing more hardware at the problem. Yeah, well, no, I'm just saying the solution is just throw more hardware at the problem. If the engine doesn't solve it after a minute, give it 10 minutes. If it doesn't solve it after 10 minutes, give it 100 minutes. That is what these tests are saying is more effective um, than changing the code. That if you change the code, that overall the analyses are going to go down in quality and it's going to perform worse. Um, that's what these tests are saying. So, the solution's usually more hardware. In this case, it absolutely is more hardware according to the tests. Unless somebody can come up with a different way to code it, and that different way passes the tests. But, I mean, I've tried everything. I've tried dozens of tests that have not even gone to the server, um, that failed, that didn't even merit testing on the official server. So, I've spent days of effort trying to address those two positions, and it's just not going to work. Um, maybe sometime a year or two from now, somebody will come up with some improvement that uh, addresses more positions just generally. Um, no, we don't. We need more hardware. That's what these tests are saying. It's just add more hardware, the analysis quality will increase. Adding more specific conditions is what I've been doing. Like I've been saying, I'm putting days of effort into it. Adding more specific position uh, conditions is just not helping. In fact, it's causing, as we see here, um, it's causing performance overall to decrease. So we had a test here, another test, and just each one of these tests is failing worse than the one before it um, in terms of trying to address these two specific positions. 
So here, this failed in 2,000 games. This one failed in 1,300 games. This is another idea. This failed in 400 games. Each of these has more and more and more specific conditions. Each of these is performing worse than the one before it. We just need more hardware. This isn't about adding more specific conditions. It's about not having enough hardware to address the problem. disconnected. What was that bing? Something binged at me. Um, don't need Acrobat up, don't need Chess Ground, because I'm not doing things in JavaScript at the moment. I mean, yeah, see if the human can adapt and, um, if the human can win more games. We're going to take the best of breed approach. So if somebody finds a better way, um, then by all means we'll take that way. But so far, every test so far has demonstrated that the way that the code is right now is the best possible way. And finding and fixing issues is challenging because you first have to correctly identify the issue. Um, I think the issue here is that this, the hardware isn't good enough. Um, there is one thing worth noting. Um, this has nothing to do with Stockfish per se. Um, let me log in in a new window so this doesn't show my password on stream. That'd be nice. Um, so that. Uh, can I join my windows together? Okay, there we are. Um, so one thing worthy of note. Um, so um, an enthusiast asks, could leech us uh, cache evals for common openings and allow that bit of analysis to be uh, looked up rather than calculated by Stockfish. Um, Thibaut says, hey, we already did that. Um, as of now, um, opening analyses are done and stored in the cloud and looked up in the cloud. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so yeah, and this list of features that uh, Lee Chess was asking about. Uh, one of the features on the list is server storage of local analysis. So you know what that means? That means um, that we've got server storage uh, right now for opening moves, but sometime eventually, maybe a year, maybe a month, maybe five years in the future, Lee Chess will support um, maybe 10 years, maybe 50, I don't know exactly when, but it's on their agenda to support cloud-based analyses. And what that means is that uh, once we've got cloud-based analyses, um, if you find a bug in the analysis, you just analyze it deeper and your better solution gets uploaded to the cloud. Um, so, Let's see. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty fair. I mean, I'm not saying that Stockfish has to be the only competitor. I mean, if you've got hundreds of hours to go write a bet your crazy house bot, or if other people do, um, they can do that. And if somebody can exploit the weakness, uh, if it's exploitable, by all means, we'll either figure out do we need more hardware or is there something that can be exploited and therefore identified as a bug. Um, what do I choose as improvement here? I guess you're asking how do I define what's an improvement and what's not, or yeah, how does this 
I mean, green means good, red means bad. Uh, how do we decide that? Um, using math. We use the uh, sequential progressive ratio tests at various time controls, all specified by the fishnet, uh, fish test, fish cooking community. Oh, how do we choose what's an improvement in the poll to improve leech us? Um, or what was chosen? I'm not sure. Uh, official results have not yet been posted. Um, see, I don't know. But I'm saying all those things in the poll are things that Lee Chess is considering to improve. And it looks like, at least for opening moves, um, they've already started doing cloud-based storage. So maybe sometime in the next 50 years, maybe sooner, uh, they'll work on having um, cloud-based storage for analyses for the entire game. Um, right, and I'm, I'm not sure that they even use results as the only criterion for selecting what they're doing next. But I think they do value uh, the community input, even if they're not providing any output to explain what they're doing. You'd have to ask Tebow, or you have to ask somebody um, in charge of the site, what it is that they're doing. I can't set their agenda for them. Um, yeah, that's entirely their choice, what they choose to do. I do try to contribute and offer ideas and sometimes can even offer code contributions. Um, but by and large, um, it's not my choice what they do. Oh, what are my, my personal selections out of the list? Um, well, give you one hint here. Uh, so I did make a forum post. Can go to my forum posts from here. So I posted this in the forum known as the Endgame Church, just a place, a safe haven for people to discuss endgames. Um, so this is a very endgame focused forum. Um, so that's where I posted the link. The top option here is Endgame Trainer. Um, I might have voted for other things, but yeah, if you've seen any of my streams where I'm playing chess, I tend to mention end games at least once every 10 minutes or so. So it should come as no surprise that I am interested in um, anything they do related to end games. Um, and then once they have all that end game stuff in place, um, then. Uh, then I'll worry about the rest. Oh, you don't think it's fair that you can select more than one? Okay. You're entitled to have an opinion. Um, at least I think that's what you mean by we can vote several times, is you can select multiple. Um... I think you're not insinuating anything else, but what do I know? But yeah, I, I would like to see them select some of the end game stuff and do that. Um, I think that would help players uh, play better games on the site if they could see that they screwed up so terribly. Okay, you are insinuating that people can vote multiple times. Um, you know, I guess that's the problem of not requiring people to submit their fingerprints or photo IDs or driver's license numbers and all that in order to vote. It's the disadvantage of convenience is that some people could rig the system. Um, now, granted, if people can do that, you think straw poll would be completely out of business, right? If every poll were rigged. Um, or if there was an enormous problem with rigging polls, 
Star Pole would be uh, laughed out of the internet. They'd be replaced by something bigger and better. So you have to figure that they're doing something right. Right, yeah, you can already limit on IP. I'm sure they consider other things too. And I'm sure attackers come up with different attacks, and I'm sure they come up with ways to identify those different attacks, and I'm sure it goes back and forth all day, and I don't maintain this site. Um, you're making an accusation against them. I can't defend them. They're not here to defend themselves. Um, but yeah, if you really think that straw poles um, are rigged, um, I mean, take that issue up with them. It's a hard problem. And one that's really only solvable through having some kind of identification system. Which defeats the convenience of having a straw poll. I mean, even on Leechess, people have multiple accounts. It's not an easy issue to address. Unless you go completely the Microsoft route with security, um, it's just too difficult. And if you do go the entire Microsoft route, you probably don't have an audience. Um, they, tend, they tend to focus much more on businesses and less on um, individuals. But yeah, what they do for businesses is pretty cool. It works pretty well. Um, so, do I have anything else to add here? Uh, I guess I could try my other project. There's like no way that my other project's going to be able to connect to Twitch, right? I mean, I already see that it won't compile. Um, so let me try just to see if I can connect to Twitch. Okay, apparently that failed with the HTTP response code 502. Uh, so yeah, apparently my other project doesn't quite work either. Um, uh, let me take a look. Did I not define this irc.properties file? I did. I do have an OAuth token in there. Um, how am I consuming this irc.properties file on my other project? I suppose I'll put this on stream. Why not? Actually, let me first put the token. Uh, let's get the proof of concept working first. I'm really not optimistic this will work, but let's try it. All right, so I've pasted the token in. Let me switch my window. Here we go. Uh, let's run Acrobot now. Improperly formatted off. So yeah, apparently my token is no good. Um. If my token's no good, then it doesn't matter what else I've got here. Uh, that should be auth colon token. Or is it OAuth colon? There it is. There it is. My token is now visible on the stream, and I have no way to get a new one. Oh well, we tried. Uh, nobody's going to copy that. 
Besides, Twitch is changing their API. Um, all right, so. Joins. Okay. Well, by some random miracle, it's connected. We, indeed. Um, yeah, none of the commands work, but there's the bot. Oh, wow, I only need to sacrifice, like, five goats to get that to work. Um, so, what now? We trust utils can close. Test.java, I don't know. Don't know where to go with any of this. Um, Twitch, yeah, let's go back here. So, I don't know. Suppose I don't need this new line of code. Um, don't know why this is failing to find the file on the disk. Like we're finding the image just fine. Um, it's acrohealth.png. It's just when we try to do anything else requiring a file in any way that we're failing to find that. It suggests I need to like copy or move all these files out of the resources directory into the source packages directory, even though that shouldn't be necessary. Um well hang on. Hang on. So what I was trying earlier was this .get class that get as resource abc file plus acro letter let text which defines the file extension for that stuff and trying to print out the file path and we get null uh, as in that's not a file path um, so get class pretty well, okay let me go up the stack this is executed by run. This is a, some kind of thread going. Yeah, let me get to the closest documentation. So we got get class, which is a built-in Java method. We got get resource, um, which somehow attempts to get the resource. Method delegates to the object's class loader. If the object was loaded by the bootstrap class loader, it delegates to class loader, gets system resource. Before delegation, our absolute resource name is constructed from the given resource using this algorithm. If the uh, name begins with a slash, the absolute name of the resource, uh, okay. Uh, otherwise, the absolute name is of the following form, package name slash name, um, yeah, my resource name did not have a slash anywhere in it. That might be problem. That almost certainly is a problem. Let's try this. Let's prepend that with a slash and see, does that work any better? I mean, we're gonna have other problems, but maybe we can at least address this one. Yes, that was the issue, is that unless there's a slash somewhere in the path, the resource will not load. Um, and that res is not a package name, so I needed to change res to just slash. Okay, so new letters uh, is defined based on this. This, where we're saying res slash, should just be slash. There we 
go A, B, C, D, E, F. It's also going to be preceded with slash because that's the one we were interested in. Um, okay, so now if I run, uh, still things don't work. That's okay. We're getting there. Um, so here's the file. Now, how do I convert a URL to a file, or rather, how do I load it? <sighs> Buffered reader takes a reader. File reader takes a file. How do I do a URL reader? Um, Can I do URL that to file or something? To string to URI. Okay. Um, get resource. Some. Oh. Um, hopefully, this attempt to find get resource is going to be limited just to this project. It's not. It's looking through all of Java, but. Um, Get scaled image. Get scaled image takes a URL. And what does it do with that? Image IO dot read of that URL. Um, okay. So that's image specific. How can I get this to consume the URL without um, changing everything? Um, let's take a look at Java get resource load. Wait, how am I trying to load? What am I trying to do with this? I'm trying to read it as a file or as a buffer. I'm not trying to load it. I'm trying to read the resource. File loading by get resource. Um, get resource as stream. Oh, right. Um, buffer reader, um, okay, uh, let's say, rather than doing this, um, how do I, buffer reader, B equals something. Um, actually, I don't even care if it's buffered or not. I just want a reader. Equals new stream reader? String reader? Nope. Okay, new buffered reader. New. What kind of reader can I take here? There's got to be one that, like, reads from a from a URL or from a stream. Um, new file. Get resource two URI. Okay, let's instead of changing the reader, the reader itself might be okay. Um, acro letter dot class dot get resource abc file dot to uri. Okay, why does that fail? Oh, could throw a uri syntax exception. Um, Alt-Enter shows hints. Uh, nope, nope. Alt-Enter shows hints. Add a catch clause for that. Um, Go. Uh, should be E, 
GX. Wait, what? Oh, does this require an I.O. exception? Well, fine. Fine, we'll handle those two different ways. Yeah, that's probably okay. Um, and this is also I could attempt to read from in. Let's convert this if we can. Right, so that handles all the um, closing of the buffer when we're done stuff for us. All right, let's give it a whirl. Um, which means, oh, where did I put the URL stuff? What have I changed so far? Get show changes. Uh, where's my big diff? Echo game. Okay, this stuff, this new letters doesn't need that. Though it wouldn't hurt to be cleaning things up as I go along. Um, that's not a problem at the moment. Um, all right, acrodata.txt, not found. So we're going to apply that same pattern, this stuff, um, elsewhere. So that would be over in edit stats. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Um, it's not going to try to write to this file, is it? Apparently it is. Well, that's not going to work. Um, but okay, sure, why not? Uh, data file. Eh, whatever. Is that the only error we had? Evidently. Uh, game base. Okay, it makes sense. Um, Acrodata.txt. Yeah, is this something we're trying to read or to write? Like here, see, data files equal to game base.txt. Um, okay, let's not edit the statistics because we don't need to. All right, so we should be connected um, and the bot should be saying things in the channel momentarily. There we are. Loaded letter file, deflet. Um, probably doesn't need to be saying that, but okay. Um, cool. So we're authenticated. Um, mm -hmm. Acro box. So, I mean, this is the big stream, the thing that John hit going all this time. I assume that's his image. Even though, I mean, it's not, but I assume that he licensed that somehow. Or is going to fix it. Um, or that we just have creative, oh, I'm sorry, fair use reasons to use it. Um, either way, we're live. Alright, so... Anything else? I mean, we've connected. Um, how do I verify that it's live? Uh, help, does that work? Nice. It does uh, whisper to me, help. So, oh, it doesn't know its own name. So that's an issue. Um, so we're going to look for a Zugnet here. Uh, there's two matches for Zugnet. Uh, now I could change this to have the name of my bot, but that's not the correct solution either. Um, 
So, let's see. Obviously, the bot is not named Zugnet here. Um, so, what do I do? Well, okay, that's a separate task. With the bots up and running, it replies to commands. We got temp.txt, which we don't want. So we're going to delete that. Um, so yeah, proof of concept works. Can't nobody say that nothing was done with this bot. Because evidently I got it up and running. Um, in my environment, where I'm able to actually do things with it. Uh, okay, so let's compare. I edited the project file. Um, apparently removed an un... oh, I'm going to remove this unused line of code. Um, hacker serve, change these paths, do not have the word res in them because we don't need that to get the resources. Um, add a documentation. Um, Disabled this, but I can re-enable it for purposes of committing. Um, let's see. Uh, documentation's wrong. Uh, host name. I do this here. Well, yeah, I am going to change. Well, I'm going to leave that be. It's going to be host. It's going to be the IRC server host name. Um, that's fine. Somehow I switched into visual editing mode. I didn't want to do that. Okay. Um, let's keep going. So I added the documentation. Oh no, my mouse is seized up. Or my stream has. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Oh, my mouse is back. Um, how do I exit visual editing mode? I'll have to figure that out later. Um, okay, so that's the channel name. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure that having this here, it's, it's no better than the existing documentation, so I'm getting rid of it. There we go. Uh, was it? Okay, yeah, I figured out how to undo the thing I did earlier. That's cool. Uh, so that's 404 genfiles.properties get ignore logger.properties Oh. Yeah, I can't upload my token, obviously. Um... So, <sighs> what to do about that? Uh, exclude that from the commit. Exclude logger properties. Exclude user properties. Um, so those are all new files that don't need to be included. There's the resources directory. There's acro letter. Um, I enhanced a little bit. And the project properties. Good enough, I think. It would have made more sense for me to organize it by path. So we skip past all the things that are added in the resource directory that we don't need. 
uh, existing files that are changed are updated. Uh, and that seems good to go. Um, I'm using NetBeans IDE, Integrated Development Environment. I usually don't use NetBeans, so um, I'm not so proficient in it anymore, but Okay, so we're going to exclude the three new files. So we have the git ignore file. Um, I didn't know this is going to mention anything about Java Project 1. That's weird. I don't like that, but... Okay. Um, Change resource loader. Remove arias prefix. Uh, remove prefix from resource loader. actually load resources from URL rather than from file. Load resources using uh, git resource. Shows me I still have a few local files that are not yet committed. That's okay. Then we go over here, git, remote, push. And it's beautiful. Yeah, I usually do use Vim. Um, in this case, I'm working with another developer's code. They actually wrote it all to work under Eclipse. And then they're complaining that after they uploaded it to GitHub that nobody else uses the code. They didn't document how to use it. Um, they did at least provide all the source code. So it was possible after hours of consternation to find a way to get this to work. Um, so there's that. Um, so that's the silver lining. I'm still curious what this why this is even mentioning a Java project one in its set of things to exclude. Um, that seems weird. Like if I go here and I search for Java Pro, yeah, we see a reference here in git ignore to Java project one, but I'm not seeing a Java project one in this path structure anywhere. Um, so don't ignore it and see what happens. Okay. Um, git show changes. Okay, uh, that's cool. Oh, maybe that's, um, maybe that's John's name for, um, the project. Remove uh, Java project one. There we go. Commit that. Get remote push. And now, yeah, anybody could go over in the browser to. Well, I'm not going to say that it's going to work for anybody, but if somehow, um, despite the fact that Twitch's token generator doesn't generate tokens, if somehow you do have an OAuth token, um, then you can um, read the summary here that explains what acrophobia is all about. Uh, he did upload it to his GitHub. I forked his GitHub right here. This is his 
um, version of the code uh, for commits. Eek, make whispers quicker. Uh, flexibilized acro player and added, added basic flood protection. Um, and then beyond that, I added a readme, added a license, which he probably should have added. I'm assuming that GPL v2 is fine because he's using GPL licensed code in his project. Um, and um, can look through here and look at the changes I just committed. Um, so things to allow it to import into NetBeans, add the license, add the README. Um, and then more recently this change where we have the main class and I added the Java doc explaining the usage of the constructor for the main class. Um, also I defined the main class in my project, which I don't think he did. Um, uh, I also got rid of the thing that forces you to go to his channel and forces you to use the incorrect host name. Um, updated this to use resource paths rather than file names. Um, we're using get resource and doing proper exception handling. Um, and somewhere in here I thought I added, um, yeah, here we are. Constructs the Acrobat server. Uh, and explain what the name, host, OAuth, and channel are all about. So there's some hope of a dream that people might be able to use this, although uh, the OAuth authentication key um, generator is not working. It's offline at the moment. I found a bug with Twitch. I honestly don't expect them to get back to me ever because um, I'm just a developer. I, I don't know. They're not looking for new developers, I guess. Like, there's tons and tons of uh, Twitch apps already out there, Twitch bots already out there. They're not looking for yet another bot. Um, so they're not going to help me, I don't think. But um, that doesn't, does not prevent me from filing the bug anyway. So, um, let's see. If it's in the dot get ignore, if what's in the dot get ignore, it won't won't it be ignored on his machine, so not uploaded. Um I think you're probably referring to this Java project one uh that I got rid of in the dot get ignore. Um and uh, I guess my perspective is that he's never going to, even if I created a pull request and submitted it, he has no interest in doing things in NetBeans. So he's never going to accept this merge into uh, the upstream project or repository. Um, so I'm envisioning that the old repository with its lack of license, lack of readme, lack of documentation, um, in general, challenge with structure, but at least all the source code is there. People can try to read the source code um, and try to do something useful with it if they've seen him code with it before. Um, I'm assuming that that particular project is not going to see much new development, um, in particular because he's complaining about how nobody uses it. And he doesn't even use it in his own channel, so I see my project as a new dawn, um, as something that, you know, I could do something with this, and other people can contribute to my repository, and I will accept their contributions and keep that positive interaction with the community moving. Um, and that involves things like adding a license so people can contribute adding a readme so people can understand what it's about and trying to do things to make it easier to deploy this. Um, so, so far, um, I had some very limited success deploying it, but um, success nonetheless. 
Uh, so yeah, if I switch my window, go back to NetBeans, and hit go, or run, uh, we get the application. Um, curiously, this time I actually got an additional error message, so I'm going to fix that right here, right now, why not? Um, there's no reason not to fix it, so we go over to edit, st oh right, this is the thing where I commented this out, because he says just a test. So for purposes of running this, getting rid of the error message, comment that out. Now you could argue, why don't I just upload the commented out code to GitHub? Well, I don't know what this is for. This is probably for maintaining a database. Um, I'm not ready to do that yet. Um, or other people could figure out how that part works. But at least if you have an OAuth token, you can authenticate, the bot can run. And I'm not sure if it does anything more than that. Um, yeah, by his own admission, this code is just a test, so I'm not sure what else there is to it. Um, but, you know, it's progress. Anybody can check out this project from GitHub, uh, at least from my GitHub, or from his, if you're feeling more adventurous and you want to try to do things at Eclipse and... Don't mind a few bumps along the way. I'm trying to smooth that out um, so you get more contributors, but um, one step at a time. So let me go back to the condition where this is failing. Um, and the next step is to figure out what is it that we're going to do to read files and write files. That's a big challenge. Um, okay, this is a file reader trying to read data files. Um, so, let's see, I can do game base dot class, or in fact, yeah, this is an instance method, so I can't, um, I have to do it this way, get resource. Uh, to URI. Um, this file reader does not accept a URI, but somehow this worked in the other source code that I just touched a minute ago. Um, how did that work? How did I manage to get that working elsewhere? Oops, I didn't mean to um, do this get resources stream thing here. Uh, apparently I have to do new file with the URI, uh, which I can do. No big deal. New file reader requires a file. You can take a file and convert it to a URI. Uh, reader, file reader, etc, etc. Now this is um, observing that there's an error. Oops, we're not going to throw that exception. We're going to catch it. Uh, add a catch clause to our existing try catch block uh, in case the file itself has a malformed syntax, which it shouldn't. And let's try to deploy that. Because this compiles now, right? Um, interestingly, there's no whole try with resources stuff here. Um, actually, let's get this file. Um, <laughs> file data file is equal to that file. Apparently he needs a string, so we'll give him a string. Um, I'm not sure why count lines needs a string. Oh, needs a string so it can do a file reader using a file name. Um, uh, I should just 
um, be able to change this to data file, change this to file type. Um, java.io.file? Does it know what this is? Okay, it understands what a file is. Um, but apparently it requires me to spell out java.io.file because autocomplete's not working. Okay, so there we go. File space. It's not like there are two types of files that this imports, right? Okay, yeah. Um, address my compile errors there. So over on this side, I just pass the file in, and it can count the number of lines. Um, there's probably more optimal ways to do some of these things, but we'll deal with it for now. Is S used anywhere other than that in closing? No. Um, so let's get rid of that. And instead of saying S, let's say line, uh, because that's what we're reading. We're reading a line and returning a line. Um, so game data D. D is not what you want to name this. Worst case, just name it data. But um, do never, ever, ever use single letter variable names for things that actually mean something um, N here might be excusable, probably not. Game data P, whatever P is, I, it's impossible for anybody to read this code. Um, let's inline N, uh, that should have worked. Oh. Okay, where's the data file? Oh, my mouse is giving out again. That's no good. Let me try a different mouse. I don't know why that mouse isn't working. Let's try this one. For this weekend, I had gotten a different mouse out here because um, I was playing some bug house. And... Um, all right, so this works. So, file, oh, well, this isn't gonna work either. Nope. Um, okay, apparently I've gotta make a polymorphic version of this method just so I can have one that accepts a file. Oh my goodness, what a mess. And the messiest part about this is that one of them is going to take a file, one's going to take a string, and maybe I do it the other way. String file name. And say return count lines new file file name. Um, and then we deprecate this because there's this probably won't this code probably doesn't even work, but it compiles. Uh, I deprecate this because there's a better way. Use a file, don't use a file name. There's no guarantee that the file name is gonna work. Um, okay, our project compiles. Does it run? It does run. Um, version 0.1. Let's see, what else do we got here? Um, oh, we're up here and running, and if I type exclamation point help, it sends me a private message explaining the rules of the game. Um, if I type acro, does it start? Um, if I type start, does it start? New game starting. All right, very exciting. Um, acro data that text does not load. But other than, you know, 
Uh, not being able to save the game, I presume? Hmm. Oh, it's trying to read a file just to get colors, apparently. Um... So, you're not seeing the visualization. Let me add this here. Um... So here we are. This is what it looks like. Um, I suppose you thought that was terribly clever and such. So we've got a leaderboard, the current acro. Uh, we'll say that this picture is John, but it's not. And then something that's supposed to show in this upper left quadrant. So. Uh, I missed a message here. Why is my Twitch not showing your message? That's weird. Um, let me try refreshing my Twitch uh, client here. Because you're saying something important about if it's my own personal stuff, whatever, but if I'm planning on sharing and collaborating, then I need to be doing something. And I see that um, in my client that shows um, on my stream, but curiously, my chat client that connects directly to Twitch is not showing your messages. I don't understand that. Um, but, yeah, I guess I'll look through the broadcast and attempt to uh, parse what it is that you said. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what you mentioned here. Uh, but, yeah, I get the sense that um, you're saying something quite important. Uh, okay, so there's our Acro server. Update high scores. Oh, okay, so this tries to reach out to some sort of data file. Gamebase.txt. Yeah, I'm not going to be using a data file for a database. We're going to use a proper database if this is going to be done at all. Um, and we'll find a way to make that work. Um, yeah, absolutely, you should not be using single-letter variables. It makes the code unreadable and unmaintainable. Uh, I don't need this library open. Let's focus just on Acrobat. Um, So, yeah, I think this is okay. I think out of all the resources I'm dealing with, let's ignore game base, which I just made changes to so I could just get this to run at all. I enhanced IO utils so that we can deal with files rather than strings, although ideally I'd want to use like URLs, but whatever, that's more indirection that I don't need at this moment. Um, acro letter, not entirely sure what's the difference between an acro letter versus a letter. Uh, apparently has attributes of a C and a prob. Um, oops, let's save that. Um, So I'm guessing that that's defined in the file, which says the probability of each letter. Um, uh, should not be using string buffer, but string builder. Replace all. Because um, we're not doing any buffering. Um, Let's iterate through files. Let's inline the files. 
factor inline, uh, preview, whatever, sure. Wait. Oh, wow. So apparently this aria slash acro is supposed to be a thing. Um, so I'm going to change that to use a URL. And then from that, we can say acro letter dot class dot get resource. Um, uh, oh, wait, no, this is actually inspecting the file system. In which case, we're just screwed no matter what we try to do. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, anything else? FN for fun file name? No, it should be, I mean, if you want to say something more, call it file name. Um, SB string builder. Um, I mean, that's the result that we're returning. Uh, but this function is not going to work anyway, but sure, why not? List files returns a string. Uh, I guess it's as good as that's going to get. Um, Got some redundant casts going on. I've not touched this code in this commit, so I'm leaving that be for a moment. Um, do I have, what do I have here? Oh, we're using a vector instead of a better kind of, a non-deprecated collection. Uh, to do should actually be issues in your GitHub issue tracker. Um, Uh, assuming you're actually intending to do anything about them. Um, version equals version 0.1 we. That's good to know. Uh, spam. So spam is the name of his channel tell command. Um, Would announce be, uh, I mean, his choice of verbs is kind of abysmal, but at least it serves a purpose. It's, it's unambiguous, but the version is not 0.1 we. I mean, you could get away with saying the version is version 0.1, I guess. Um, but, yeah, let's do it that way. Actually, hang on. Version, and then we're going to take the version text and put it into here. Um, and if you really want that functionality, sure, we'll put it here too. Oh, this is a one on one communication. Um, fine. There we go, that should be okay. Um, I could even add an author name in here if I want. But I don't feel like that, I don't feel that mean at the moment. Uh, okay. Anything else? Okay, I guess this doesn't need to be a vector. It should be a list if we can afford it, and here we can. Uh, actually, 
Wait, what? What is this? So we're counting the number of players. Um, I'm curious. Is there a better way to do this? Uh, filter or stream uh, dot count? Or no, we have to filter with the predicate. Predicate being connection uh, and a get chan is equal to chan. Um, dot count. One liner. Don't need a loop. Don't need any of that. Don't need a variable. That's your player count in the channel. Um, possible lossy conversion from long to int. Um, you know, in case we ever do get more than two million players on this at once. Um, yeah, there's your one-liner. Um, so that's a cleaner way to perform that. Now, granted, that's probably a bit silly. Um, predicate test equals... Actually, predicate filter... What does filter take? What do they call this? They call this a predicate. Equals this. There we go. That's slightly more readable. Uh, lambda expression not expected here. Uh, interesting. How about now? Lambda still not expected. How about now? Okay, does it... Now does it expect a predicate or a lambda there? <laughs> yeah. So, two-liner, still okay. Um, doesn't require you to define all these silly things in the middle. Um, let's replace that with string builder. Uh, string buffer, you're going to replace that with string builder. Uh, replace this with string builder. Um, let's see. Uh, 12 occurrences. Yeah, replace them all. Okay, so we're using string builder everywhere instead of string buffer. Um, we're still using vector somewhere apparently, so let the compiler take me to where we're doing that, and I'll make a determination as to what we're doing. Um, a list more than suffices in this context. How about, oh, element at. Um, let's do it this way, because we don't ever care about the index i. We just care that we are iterating through all the connections. So we don't need the vector, we don't need the index, we just need to iterate through each connection. Um, likewise here. Okay. Wrap that. Uh, I think this is suitable. 
even though I've got all these yellow warnings in the margin because we're doing things suboptimally, when it compiles out to bytecode, the compiler should optimize that. I shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, what a mess. Okay, what's this S that's used for turning? Show vote. Let's call that. Uh, where, where is all the places that he does this S equals thing? String builder S. He has this all over the place. Result is more useful than S. In some sense, um, let's see, make acro, uh, show acros, show topics. I mean, he does have his own naming convention. I'm changing that convention because you don't name variables, uppercase letters. Um, you just don't do that. Um, make acro. It's a string tokenizer of A, while the string tokenizer has more tokens. Uh, what re reference is this? <sighs> no usages. So in theory, I could just kill that. It still compiles, much to my surprise. Um, I'll never know what this did. I'll never understand it. But it's there. Oh. Um, this takes a string and converts it into an acronym. Um, string, I don't know what we want to call this, uh, input. Sure. Um, back pronym. Oh, actually, the documentation calls this a sentence, so you can call this a sentence. Um, well, the token either has tokens, and pen the first letter of each part of the sentence and return the result. Okay, cool. Um. <laughs> okay, acro num is the number of acronyms that have been... Players aren't entering acronyms. Players are providing sentences. Um. Acro list. Um, first of all, that's not a list. Um, second of all, it's not typed, even if it were a list. It's an array of acro lists. Okay, and we declared all our attributes on a single line so that we can't add breakpoints. Um, author equals A, votes equals zero. See if you're always going to initialize votes to zero, you don't need to do it that way. Also, uh, it's not struct. Isn't there a lesser form of a class here? Uh, okay. 
acro list. Oh, it's used elsewhere. So I can't make this private. I can make it static though, right? Um, update acros. Yeah, this is fine now, I think. Okay, see how my error went away. String S. But this is not an acro, this is a sentence. Uh, int author, fine, we're using kind of weak data typing. That could always be strengthened. Um, it should be initialized like this. You could say this dot sentence and so forth. Um, but furthermore, yeah, if you're always initializing this to zero, you don't need to do that in the constructor. You can do that out here. Um, and if you're saying that a thing can't be mutated, I'm assuming it can't. Um, oh look, hey, somewhere else we're allowing this to be mutated. Okay, so that's apparently not final. Is the author changeable? No. Is the time changeable? Yeah. So everything's mutable other than the author. Um, and then we can actually give these proper names, like sentence, like author, uh, like time. Although this should probably say millis rather than time. Uh, this should probably, s well, I don't know. Um, let's change that back to time. I'm just making too many changes here. Um, in fact, yeah, this is the difference between this current time uh, versus time. So that's actually a measure of latency. Um, no, it's not. Uh, that's the time since um, this round time started. Okay. Um, we have all these constants. At least that's better than nothing. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. I mean, this could all be improved a bit. It's obvious that we're talking about enumerations rather than constants, but... Um, you know, we'll just let some of this slide because um, uh, we have to. Um, line break there. Tap that out. There we go. Slightly more organized. Sleep is called in a loop. <laughs> oh, that's good fun. Um, all right, so I suppose that's fine. Um, I don't like putting my if statements on the same line of code as the thing that gets executed conditionally because that makes it harder for other people to read. So I'm going to separate that out. Um, put that like that. 
Yep, we're refactoring Acrobot. I actually got it working, even though the Twitch token generator isn't working. I still have a leftover token from the last chatbot I had. Um, so, uh, I have some hope that this might not completely suck. Okay, um, so if mode is not equal to mod pause, return zero. And you know, if we're returning zero, we're not going to call this block. So, we can do that. Um, yeah, I'm just doing a couple cosmetic changes here before I check it in. how he manages to read his own code. I don't know how anybody manages to do anything with this, but his code works. It's no wonder coding for him is such a frustrating experience. No harm, no benefit in combining that together. LOF equals topic vec dot size. What if topic vec happens to be a list? What it happens to be like an array list? What it happens to be a linked list? Does it really have to be a vec? <laughs> oh, did I separate the libraries? No, I just got it compiling and running. Um, oops, okay, topic vec is different from topics. Fine, we'll call it a topic list then. Because really this is a list. LOF. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know what he's trying to do here. He's trying to do a shuffle or something and get some topics. I think that's all he's trying to do. There's no Java doc to explain it. Um, and the file's name is top file rather than topic file. So, I mean, top file could be looking at the processes that are running in your operating system. <laughs> um, the top list. Oh. No, top list is an array of ints. Um, okay. Uh, fine, I'll name that topic map, even though it's technically not a map. Uh, topic key is probably better. Um, yeah. That's fine. Um, the, oh, I did, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, I did get this running in Eclipse, and then I uploaded my fork of it to GitHub. Um, and if people are interested in contributing, I will maintain the project. Um, uh, so... So, this code makes me cry, but it works, so it's more than I would have done. I can't complain too much. Um, S equals speed. Okay, so you get some kind of bonus points here based on how quick you played. Um, whatever. Long T. Okay, so get speed. Here's a 
case where he actually did indent things after um, the if statement. So that's appreciated. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing that, yeah, another thing we need to consider um, is not using a flat file for the database because uh, flat files are kind of hard to deploy and like maybe in what you're saying in a sense bundle them it's really hard to um, come up with a flat file format that's gonna work well and that probably even is true with or without github with or without multiple contributors I mean the perfect example of it not working very well would be Loxball. Um, although that was a Microsoft database thing. So, um, but yeah, using a database that's not bad would probably be a good thing. If this, else that, if this, else that, there we go, show score, show scores, uh, good enough. Oh, now he's putting spaces between his strings, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. In this particular case he is putting spaces between the strings. Um, history, and then he's putting the carriage return on its own line. We got a for loop, but only if we have an if statement that's satisfied. string builder or constructor can go on a single line. Got all these fun indexes. Um, wait. It's got like this s equals thing all over the place. We're going to call this a token. Uh, char generally goes by ch. Um, okay, s equals time. Um, I mean, goodness, something more descriptive would be now is equal to current time. Could also say current time is equal to current time in millis, but whatever. Um, T would be the duration for which we want to sleep. Um, yeah, let's change this back to, well, it's some time. We're going to use T for time. Uh, but no, I was looking for, still haven't hit here, S is equal to things, S is speed, fine. I can accept that. Yeah, it's deprecated. I'm not even going to worry about that particular thing. Um, okay, so this is in better shape than it used to be in. I'm not at all saying it's perfect. It really isn't. Um, hmm. But it's improving. Oh, we can use functional operations. Ah! That code is unreadable if I inject all those functional operations. Oh, man. Um, new. Okay. New. Okay, so at least we're not declaring new things on separate lines. This should be somehow readable. Probably not perfect. Um, acro game extends thread. This is also not something you want to be doing. Uh, I mean, one thing is, can we do like implements runnable? Or do we not have the ability to sleep in this context? I know this is anything but transparent here, but um, 
Okay, and then if we're doing the thing in the if statement, do that. Try thread dot sleep um, for duration. Um, the catch there. Try thread dot sleep again. Uh, whatever. Keeping up with this. Is, it's fun. I'll say. <laughs> Okay, so now we're no longer extending thread. Uh, I'll just run a linter on this. Okay, well, I'm going to check in what I did, and then we'll figure out... Uh, can you recommend a linter for NetBeans? Um, you're right that a linter would be the right approach. Sorry, I was not thinking very clearly. Uh, there are good linters at this point. what I did. Those files aren't going to get checked in. Um, oh, right. Better I.O. handling. Better input handling. Code cleanup. Good enough. Ship it. Uh, push to upstream. Check style. Editor independent and use the Google Java style. Why would I want to use Google Java style? Um, got. Um, let me check NetBeans check style. Surely there's a, yeah. Uh, follow the instructions in the article. It says Stack Overflow. Uh, go to, oh right, there's somewhere in here there's the plugins. There it is. Uh, available plugins, search for check style, check for newest, whatever. Yeah, this check style thing really. Um, oh! Unless I want to use my own rules for the linter. Um, now, NetBeans 7 has check style, NetBeans 8 apparently does not. Um. How do I add that to NetBeans 8? Not what we're you were talking about. I'm curious what this is. Code minimap. Um, yeah, so that's not what we're looking for. Lint. There's no linter in this library. Um, let's see if I can find like a net beans eight linter.
in NetBeans. It's Alt Shift F to format, I think. Yeah. That's what that sounds like, I agree. So just to clarify, a linter can be used for all kinds of uh, linting, but I think what you're talking about is just something that formats code, uh, specifically that particular aspect of a linting, which maybe there's something else to linting. I'm not sure. I've not looked too deep into that. Um, but so the community contributed the... Java code formatter from Eclipse Neon, Eclipse Luna, Mars.2, uh, but I think in general, oh, okay, yeah, anything stylistic, um, but I think you're saying install the linter just for purposes of formatting the code. Um, I mean, if the idea is that we want to automatically format code, I just do this. Uh, what was it? Format, Alt-Shift-F. But this doesn't apply the exact right rules that, I don't know. Maybe it's fine. I guess it wouldn't hurt to look at it. It's certainly better formatted than it was, but... I'm sure it's quite different than what Zug had in mind. Um, so I have to define a convention for doing this for any file when I was doing this manually, case by case. Um, I mean, I was just doing it for one file there. I wasn't too concerned about the whole project. Uh, but I guess I could define a way to do this for all the files. Uh, like when we have an array, I'm sorry, when we have multiple declarations, like Zug did here, instead of using a proper enum type, which we should be using enums instead of that, we should be using stronger data types in general. Um, but if we're going to do it this way, and if we're setting aside the idea that we're going to improve the code a different way, um, then we want to change how we do declarations. Um, mm, alignment. I mean, this is probably okay. Yeah, I get that you want to have a uniform style, and you don't want to manually be checking that all over the place. I don't think the code is even matured to the point where a linter makes sense. The code is really that chaotic that, um, and so many changes are still going to happen to it. Starting to lint it at this point is, um, I don't know, it's overkill. So now I've got to define all the rules for my linter. Uh, Multi-line. <sighs> How do I do this? Okay. Oh, this is talking about alignment, as opposed to when I need to break on lines. <laughs> Wrapping.
I mean, there's so many things to define here. I'm not satisfied with the way that this turned out by automatically linting it. And I don't see a plugin that I trust either. disorganized as the code is there's so I mean it's more than a person would want to write but it's so little to be maintained um, yeah, over time the project can expand and, but it's it's just a mess and even defining the rules to set up how to do the linting just isn't worth it compared to doing some of the linting myself. Yes, the methodology improves efficiency over time, but um, I'm not convinced that most of this code will be around in future iterations. And yeah, it is a hassle to keep reformatting the code as you go along, that's true. Um, there's all kinds of really basic stylistic things that are even more messed up. Oh shoot. I broke the code. See? I spend all this time thinking about linting and formatting. And I forgot that I have my editor um, only showing me errors and issues in the current file. Um, so yeah, no, I just completely broke the server and we're spending this time discussing linting but that's because I was doing it manually instead of doing it the perfect way. Uh, but whatever. Uh, new thread. If we really need to do this, I'm not going to equate um, runnables and threads. Okay, G. What is G? Acro game. Um, <clears throat> g dot, I don't even know how I can do g dot get thread dot interrupt. Interrupt seems like a really disruptive thing to be calling here. I get that you want to stop the game. Um, but you can't just call interrupt on the thread to stop the game. We are, uh, I did get, um, we're looking at acrophobia. And yesterday Zug mentioned on the stream that nobody's doing anything with this code. And today I am proving him wrong that I'm finding ways to make this code easier to install so other people can do things with it. Um, adding some documentation, adding a license file so it's legal for people to add code to this. Um, trying to better explain what's going on. So, um, I don't like the fact that so many of these things end in thread interrupt. I guess I'm gonna wait. Apparently, I can't do that here. Not be called from a static context. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm sure as hell not going to um, yeah, so how do I do this? I'm making this implement um run. Uh, I'm missing an annotation there, so let's add it. Um, thread dot get. No, thread dot current thread. Okay. Uh, so 
if we're implementing run, what else does runnable give us? Please tell me it gives us some way to stop. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, void run. So we're going to define public void stop. This is going to say thread dot get uh, thread dot current thread dot interrupt. Actually, I could just call this interrupt and his code would work better than it currently works. All right. What have I changed in this iteration? Um, well, now everything compiles again. So we can get uh, show changes. Got acro serve and acro. Oh, shit. Did I check this in? I had no intention of checking that in. What a mess. Let's refresh that. Wait. Apparently that deletion had no effect either. Whatever, I don't need those files there. They aren't being used at the moment anyway. They're just a distraction. Um files. There should be a git ignore file here. There it is. Um, if I go over to uh, yeah, I actually did not check those files in, which is a good thing. I was always worried about that, but um, okay, so interrupt is now part of acro game even though stop is probably a better term for that sort of operation. Well, interrupt's probably fine, even though it's more of a machine thing than a game thing. But, um, and echo server starts the thread. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, now this acro game G is now going to be acro game game. Uh, string string CMD. Um, do we know that CMD is actually a command? I'm not sure that we know that. String A is equal to tokens that get next token. Uh, but where do we say? How do we know that CMD is actually a command? Where is that validated? I don't know. Um, acro game G should be acro game game, or acro game acro game, whatever. Okay, I've gotten rid of all those um, declarations that say acro game G. Um, are there any other single letter variable names that are just going to give me all kinds of havoc? I'm not sure. Uh, fine. commands. It's better. Logged in with connection. Oh, apparently this overrides something, so sure. This override, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, alt enter shows hints, such as add the annotation. Um, 
don't think I'm missing anything else obvious. Um, and I'm kind of flying through this. Get Flutter. Exporting non-public type through public API. Oh, am I overriding something? Wait, Flutter is not a public type. Can I make that static? Does this survive as a static class? It apparently does. There's no errors. Uh, can make it public. And there's no risk of breaking things. Um, are there other inner classes that could be nested classes? There are not. Vector of Flutter. This doesn't need to be a vector. This could be a list. So why not make it a list? Um, Flutter's connection is equal to C return F. That's fine. Got some redundant casts, whatever. That this class. Let's take a look at just this file. There's just to do's. Okay. Um, just to show this off one more time. I suppose that doesn't show on the stream. Let me show it. So, yeah. The app runs. Which is cool. I'm not saying it works by any stretch of the imagination, but it runs. It connects, it authenticates, it can whisper. Um, it's just anything else you might want to do with it might not necessarily be supported. Such as uh, playing a game of acrophobia. That might be a bit tricky at this point, because there's no database. Um, error renaming file, it says. Whatever, we've uh, got the proof of concept there. Um, let's take one more look at what's changed. Temp.txt can go. Um, and compare what we've done. Um, now honestly, I remember what I've done. Fix uh, compile error in previous commit. Commit that. And then right click, get remote push. And you can see the progress. Well, you can't see the progress bar, but it was right there at the bottom of the window and the change has been pushed to GitHub. Do I think Zug will be upset with the changes I made? Well, in fairness to Zug, um, he has been protesting how nobody's been doing anything with this. So then to come back and protest that I'm doing something with it would be kind of silly. Um, I don't think that he would do that. Um, now, I'll say I got this working in NetBeans because I'm not working in an Eclipse environment. Eclipse is inferior for this sort of development, and it's just a complete total pain in the rear end to use Eclipse for this sort of thing. So I did move it over to NetBeans, um, and, um, so I can start thinking of adding some services if I wanted to, add some database connectivity, potentially integrate a web service. Not that I'm doing any of these things, but I could if I wanted to. Um, um, ultimately, I think I'll probably just use a simpler database format and not use any of that stuff. Um, but yeah, my experiences with Eclipse overall it's just it's been really challenging to use. It's usable, but it's not the environment I'm working in. Um, okay, so here we've got like a database of letters and probabilities. Um, this could be put in database. We've got accuratedata.txt. This must be player ratings or something. Help is the help file. Um, 
acro log. Um, thinking it's accidental that that got checked in or committed. Topics. This could be put in the database. Um, I don't know. Maybe they look right, maybe they look wrong. Maybe they, if they were in a database form, then you'd be able to read and write to this file. And um, if you could read and write to this file, you wouldn't need to, I mean, you. I guess having a seed for what to load into the database could be useful. Um, but if this could be generated on the fly and put into the database during first initialization, you wouldn't even need to distribute this static file. It would be something mutable, and you could even come up with a protocol for syncing it across servers. But if it's a file, um, your options are more limited. Um, but yeah, putting a lot of these things in the database of some sort would probably serve everybody's interests better here. Um, either way, I've done something with it. So, progress is made. Um, one thing in particular is uh, I did improve, uh, I did add some Javadoc explaining what does it mean to have an Acrobat server. Um, and that these arguments are the name, the host name that you're connecting to, your open auth or OAuth token, or authentic, I'm sorry, your authentication key. Um, and the channel that you're going to join. I use the word moderate because it actually is playing the game there. So um, it, I think it does need some permissions on Twitch to connect anyway. But yeah, I added this, took out some... This function was here, but then if you passed in the parameters, it would always connect to the Zug Attic channel. It would connect to Twitch's old IRC server, which may or may not be going away in favor of the chat IRC server. So, um, just trying to make this easier to use. Um, there's a lot of room for improvement, but now anybody could go to either of our repositories, check out the stuff, um, and start doing development with it. I'd like to think I made it easier in some ways, but maybe I somehow made it harder. Um, I think my code's a little bit more readable, so hopefully he won't begrudge me for that. But, um, and if he asks me to take it down, legally speaking, he's probably within his rights to ask me to do that, so what can I do? Um, He didn't provide a license for me to edit this, but he's, other than verbally saying on his stream yesterday that he wants people to do things with it. So I don't know. Hopefully I'm doing okay moderating this project or repository or whatever you want to call it. Um, so been streaming for forever here. Um, I think I may end up taking a break, um, doing some other things, and maybe coming back, I don't know, tonight, tomorrow, sometime. We'll see. Uh, I didn't mean to tear this code apart. I'm just trying to use it and finding great difficulty understanding, like, that uh, the time is put into a variable called s and that there's ways of measuring speed by comparing s to various values and things like that. There's just a lot of folklore here that evolved over time that I'm sure Zug remembers every last bit of it but I don't because this code's new to me. Um, so I'm just trying to get my bearings with this. Um, hopefully uh, the code's in a slightly better place than before. And hopefully it'll continue to improve. Um, yeah, I think starting off by adding some sort of database 
to deploy with this, like SQL Lite um, might simplify uh, just the usage of this server. I want to call it a server, it's I guess a service, but whatever. You say tomato, I say tomato. Um, for what it's worth, this is like 400 lines of code for acro serve. Acro game is 830 some 836 lines of code. So this entire game we'll say is about 2,000 lines of code minus the library or not including the library. Um, this probably would have taken me a while to write all by myself so I'm starting from something better. Um, so this is actually the improved form of how you concatenate stuff. Uh, you can actually chain these um, append statements together. Uh, this makes the code fewer lines of code, right? No, but in some way, seriously, this does actually slightly simplify the code, or at least make it more consistent. But that's actually harder to read, so I'm going to leave it be. Um, and yeah. Obviously this could all be run through a linter and improved greatly. I don't know why some IDEs warn you about, oh, you're concatenating things within an append statement. Because if you look at what Java's compiler does, it always compiles this to um, perform append multiple times. It gets rid of this plus sign in the middle. Although that's actually contrary to what you'd expect. Um, you'd expect that the compiler should notice that this carriage return is a static, un well, it's not static, it should be. Um, oh my god. It uses the same variable, both for, um, well, for multiple types of communication. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. That's interesting. Twitch CR is equal to heart. Ah, isn't that cute? So I was going to say this is a single static unchanging variable, so it's actually a constant because whenever you have a constant, you put it in capital letters, and then you use the word final to indicate that it's actually constant. It's going to be a learning experience. Um, oh, hey look, it's version version. Um, I forgot to change this. Uh, my bad. That's entirely my fault. Um, so that doesn't, I mean, that's a really small functional change, but I now need to just make sure that when I run this, uh, it attaches to the channel. Yeah, it no longer says we, we, and version, version, and all that. Um, all right, so commit that. Uh, fix version string uh, constant and previous commit. Version constant mangled in previous commit. Commit. Okay, that's committed. Get remote push. 
all fixed. So simple. Um, yeah, so progress is made. At some point, I should just bump this to 0.2 and say, you know what, I've done more with this code um, at some point than the original developer. We're not there yet, but we're closing in on it, I hope. <laughs> um, either way, it's been fun. Um, uh, yeah, so hope this has been some way informative, educational, or instructive. If it hasn't, I guess that's my fault. So sorry about that. Um, either way, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.